A very warm welcome back to the channel. You join me tonight on what promises to be a beautifully clear night. Uh, I'm on the North Norfolk coast in the UK at a location called Brancaster Stathe. Brancaster is on the edge of a beautiful salt marshland uh, and there's a small harbour here with some lovely boats in the very very still water. So I've come here tonight without any fixed plans. Uh, we're at the end of March, almost the beginning of April. I expect that I will start off the night with some images of Orion as it sets in the west. I might get a good time lapse of Orion with some foreground interest as it sets. Um, and then really I'm just going to see how the evening goes. Um, I've got the star tracker, got my lenses. High tide will be in about an hour and a half, two hours here. So I do need to be a little bit careful about where I set myself up. Um, but thanks very much indeed for coming along for the journey and let's get on with it. Okay, we've got our first composition of the night. Um, I'm on the edge of a small creek that goes through the marsh and I'm at a, like a Y-shaped intersection on this creek and it's leading off to Orion over there in the uh, southwest. And I've also got the zodiacal light coming up through um, past Jupiter over there on the right hand side through the Pleiades um, and into the Hyades. Um, so it's a really simple portrait composition. I'm at 14 millimeters on the Canon 6D, the unmodified Canon 6D. Uh, I'm shooting 20 second exposures, f2.8 and ISO 2000. Now, unfortunately, you can see in the background there, and I'm sure you can see on the camera, the lights from Brancaster Stave, um, which will probably blow out a little bit on this image. So I'm just gonna have to try and tidy that up in the editing process. But what's fantastic about how dark it is here is I can see with my eyes, the cone of the zodiacal light. Um, and I think I've only ever seen that once by eye before. And that was down in uh, Cornwall, the very southwest tip of Cornwall at Senan Cove. So it's great to just about be able to see it again tonight with the naked eye. So I'll probably do about 20 of these exposures and stack them for noise reduction afterwards. Um, I don't especially want any fancy um, H alpha or anything like that. So I haven't used the, uh, the modified Canon 60, but I will be getting it out shortly so I can do another composition like this um, at uh, maybe something a bit more close in, so maybe 24 millimeters, something like that. Thank you. 
I'm definitely happy with that sky. Nice and sharp. Jupiter is uh, down there in the clouds, so it's quite blown out. Quite, quite a nice effect. So I think I'll do 10 one minute exposures. And then I might try to get the H-alpha filter on. See if I can't get me a bit of H-alpha goodness too. I finished my sky shots now for the portrait orientation. Um, I am now going to try and do a foreground exposure. I'm going to start with a minute. Not entirely sure whether that's going to be enough, but if it's not, I'll extend that up. Ideally, I'd bring the ISO down, but I can get around that by using long exposure noise reduction, which I may well do. Forgive me for not putting the light on, by the way. I just want to keep it nice and natural here. I can see some really cool reflections of Orion in the creek here. I really hope that comes out nicely. Still very, very shadowy. So I'm going to bump all that up to a two minute exposure. I'm going to have to work quite a bit with the mid ground, I think, because the horizon will definitely be blown out. So there might be a bit of exposure blending going on here. Okay then, so that's about 20 one minute exposures there. Hopefully that'll be enough to get some nice detail out of the nebulosity in the Orion region. Um, annoyingly, I've forgotten to bring my H-alpha filter with me, so it's just going to be with the Astro modified camera, but I should still be able to get some nice detail out with this. Cool. This is a super sketchy location. Um, and if you can see on the camera there, the creek water is now getting a lot higher. We're approaching high tide. And there's this little inlet here, which I need to straddle to get the composition that I want. But I don't really want to get my feet wet. So oh, I'm sorry for that terrible view you guys have got. But unfortunately, it's necessary. So I'm going to try and get this tripod nice and high here and then try to take a shot looking down on the creek so I can get some of this foreground interest in. Um, and I think overall this image will probably be a square crop or certainly very close to one. Okay, let's get the camera. I think that tripod is safe enough. I don't know if you can see me, you can see me, I think, just about. So, in order to get as much of the foreground in focus as I can, I'm going to stop down, I think, to f5.6. And I'm probably going to have to have a three minute exposure for that, I would have thought. While that camera is shooting away, um, I just wanted to share a little bit more about why I wanted to come out solo, specifically this evening. As I'm sure you will know by now, very sadly yesterday we heard about the passing of Alan Wallace, one of the great astrophotographers and nightscape photographers and nightscape video makers um, of our time. Um, Alan was in his mid-30s um, and it really came as a shock to the whole Astro community um, and even though I never met Alan, like many, um, I was touched by his kind comments on my images, by his encouragement of this channel um, and just by the depth of knowledge and passion that he shared on his channel 
with such great humor, such great humility. Um, I loved when I first started getting into astrophotography when Comet Nearwise was around, just following him on his adventures. It was that spirit of adventure, that spirit of fun, which got me completely hooked on taking photographs of the night sky. And that has been with me ever since. And I can trace the roots of that enjoyment right back to seeing Alan's first vlogs on YouTube. So yesterday, astrophotography and photography in general lost someone really special far too soon. And so I hope that somehow through this channel, I'm able to carry on a little bit of Alan's work in my own way um, and to share the beauty of the night sky, to share the adventure of being out in the landscape under the stars, capturing them. And I hope I inspire some of you to get out there and give this a go. So I personally am very grateful for the generosity that Alan had, not just in sharing what he did and sharing how to do what he did, but also in just how generous he was about people giving it a go. He was always encouraging. Um, and I absolutely love that. And I owe a lot of where I am with my astrophotography journey to Alan. Okay, so I'm sure you can see this houseboat, possibly, barge, um, but it's, I don't know if it's stranded or marooned, but it's, um, it seems to be moored here uh, on this creek on the landward side of the marsh. I'm quite sure how it got here. Um, but I think this will make quite an interesting foreground with the Cygnus Milky Way over there in the northeast to east. Um, which is lying flat currently uh, with Cassiopeia up in the north. So I'm going to get my foreground shots done and I'll use the tracker for the sky. For these foregrounds I'm shooting at f4 30 second exposure and ISO 1600 and you can see over there I've got a low level light it's just an led video light which i'm using to illuminate the side of the barge um, i'll move that in a second just down to the lower right here to illuminate the back end of the barge uh, as well okay that does look lovely and sharp i'm actually going to put long exposure noise reduction on to help with this Time to get the sky exposures for, really we've got the um, Cygnus region very, very low in the northeast. Um, and that is extending up to the lovely Cassiopeia region, which is really now due north. Um, and there's a little bit of high cloud up there, um, but actually I think that's adding a lot of atmosphere to the shot. Shooting two minutes, ISO 800 F4 on the tracker. You can see my lights are flashing again on the tracker, but I have just checked the exposures and they seem to be okay. Hopefully some of this high cloud will pass. Still a lovely night there. So something I'm looking out for tonight and it's keeping me slightly on edge is um, we're in a salt marsh here. This gets covered at the highest of high tides and we're in 
um, the peak of springtide season at the moment. Um, now, the ground underfoot is incredibly muddy, like thick, sticky mud. If you stand still for too long on the mud rather than these tufts of, uh, of grass, um, your feet just, just get really, really stuck. I nearly lost a welly earlier. Um, so I'm just keeping an eye out on things to make sure that I don't get stranded out here on the marsh. Um, I'll be checking my route back to the car just to make sure that I don't need to get my feet wet getting back, but it's worth it. It's beautiful out here. So dark, so still. The sounds of the wildlife just being away from, no, oh well, away from it all really. Now, unfortunately, at this stage of the night, my video camera suffered a bit of a mishap that meant I was unable to record any further audio. And so I stopped the vlogging there and I consoled myself with a bacon bap and a cup of tea. Really is the best way I know how. And that sustained me to be able to carry on shooting for another couple of hours as the Milky Way began to rise in the southeast and we were even treated to a faint aurora display to the north in the small hours of the morning. It really was a beautiful night out under the stars. I'll put up on the screen in just a second the images that I took that evening. If you got this far, thank you very much indeed for watching. And if you like this kind of content, these adventures, then please do consider subscribing to the channel. But until the next adventure, thank you very much indeed for watching.